Let's sing that along with them. The words are very simple. You make all things new. You make all things new. I will follow you. Not backwards. Forward. Amen. Can we sing that? Y'all mind standing just for a moment? source of our strength. You are our keeper. You are the great redeemer. You hold us in your hand and for that we're so very grateful and thankful. It was you who gave us today brand new mercies we see. It was your grace that sustained us and brought us from one year to the next. You are God and you are good. We thank you for inhabiting our praise today. We thank you for meeting us in this place. Now, O oh God, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Speak to your people today. Give us what we need. Give us strength for the weak. Give peace to those who are troubled in mind. Increase our faith that we would see you for all that you are. And then inspire us that we would give you the glory, that we would give you the praise. This is your servant's prayer in Jesus' name. Let the people of God say amen. Amen. Y'all may be seated. Amen. I want to turn every mic off that ain't mine. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Still getting a little bit of, y'all getting an echo? We're okay now. I think we're okay. No. Amen. God is good. Worthy to be praised said it yesterday, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the sand, God is good. He's worthy to be praised. Uh, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Amen. Happy New Year. Yeah, whatever is going on now, it's making it worse. Do the opposite. Amen. Happy New Year. Please do the opposite. <laughs> Amen. told somebody here happy new year today amen we looked at somebody not the person you came with somebody else happy new year god is good amen y'all know not everybody stepped over to a new year just give me another mic maybe amen not everybody stepped over uh, we'll work through it uh, from uh, last year into this year. Amen. It's the grace of God. The grace of God. The grace of God that kept us. Amen. It's the goodness of God that kept us. It was God who did it. See if y'all can hear me. It was God who did it. Can y'all hear me okay? Y'all can hear me okay? All right. Amen. Now I'm just testing whether I hear myself properly. <laughs> God is good. Amen. I think we can make it through. Uh, God is good and worthy to be praised. And so I counted a, a privilege.
privilege to be here today, um, knowing that not everybody was able. Y'all know that? Amen. Which means that God brought us to this day, uh, brought us into a new year. Uh, that tells me that God has purpose for each of us. Oh, y'all should be excited about that. Amen. Amen. God has a purpose and a plan for each one of us because he allowed us to be here. Amen. 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 God has a purpose and a plan for each one of us. I'm letting some more folks who are trying to make their way in get on in. Y'all look at me. Everybody was going to turn around and say, who holding us up? Nobody's holding us up. But I give uh, thanks to God for this day. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give a. I don't know what I'm gonna give. Uh, but the Lord put a text on my heart for this first Sunday. Um, I was blessed last week, not just because I. Well, the Holy Spirit preaches just preaches through vessels, Amen. But not just because the Holy Spirit preached through me as a vessel. Um, but I was blessed by the benediction last Sunday. Amen. Were you? Amen. Amen. And um, I was, I was, I'll say, tempted to preach the invocation, the invocation, uh, the start of a worship. Uh, the start of a worship experience is often described as the invocation where we call people uh, to begin to uh, worship, uh, to set their hearts right uh, for God. And uh, he didn't give me that word to preach. Uh, put a different word on my heart uh, for this morning. So I'll preach it as best I can. You've probably heard the scripture before. Uh, but I think it's a good message for a good day. Amen. It's a good message for a good day. Um, before I preach it, I just want to put a, um, I want to echo and put an exclamation point where Pastor Michael ended. Um, not this Monday. Amen. But the following Monday, Monday, January the 15th, at noon, here at Morningstar, we have the privilege to host the East St. Louis citywide, more, um, Dr. Martin Luther King, I was about to say Morningstar, Dr. Martin Luther King uh, commemorative service. Amen. Now, I don't know who's going to come. They tell me a lot of folks are going to come. Um, but I want to make sure the morning star is here. Amen. So I'm going to ask you right now, because who off work? Who off work? Amen. Amen. Now, you in church, you off work. Amen. Amen. I saw some more hand, hands go up. Um, if you're off work, I'm, I'm inviting you. Uh, I'm encouraging you. Um, I'm welcoming you. Uh, to that service, noon, amen. I promise you um, it will be, um, it'll be joy-filled, amen. It'll be honoring to the life and the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King uh, Jr., and I promise you I won't be preaching long. I promise you, uh, but I need a few amens, amen, amen, and then I need a few amens a week from now, amen. So I want you to uh, come out. Don't come out on your own. Bring somebody with you. If you're a parent, bring your children with you. Grandparent, bring a grandchild with you. They don't have to want to be here. Just bring them. Amen. 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 Because some of y'all got a pull along blessing. You got pulled somewhere and God spoke to you. You got pulled somewhere and God encouraged you. You got pulled somewhere and God spoke into your life. Just pull them with you. Amen. You got a spouse, just pull them with you. A amen. Pull her with you. Amen. So we will see you, uh, Lord willing, on MLK Day here at Morningstar at noon. I think that's it by way of announcement for me. I want to get into the preach word, um, and I am not going to be long. Amen. Amen. Won't you stand? <laughs> Won't you stand? Amen. Won't you stand? Uh, hopefully, uh, thank you to the team that produces the uh, the handout. So, uh, we really do appreciate you. Uh, I'm going to read from the Gospel according to Matthew, uh, chapter 13. I'm going to pick up in verse 18 
although you really need to begin around verse 4 to get the context, and I'll give the context. Uh, this particular text is, um, it is found also in Mark and in Luke. Uh, each writer writes about it in a, a different way, but it's the same parable uh, that Jesus gave. Let me read it for your hearing, and then I'll try my best to preach it. Uh, Matthew writes in Matthew 13, uh, verse 18, he says, Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while and when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, and y'all know this, but the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. Verse 23, as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Uh, I tagged the title to the text for today. The title is a simple title. You will remember it, I believe, when you leave here today. The title is simply fruitful. Uh, fruitful. Somebody say with me, fruitful. Amen. The title is fruitful. Uh, I love the beginning of a new year. Uh, I love the beginning of a new year because the beginning of a new year, um, it is filled with new possibility. Um, there is a new opportunity. Uh, there are some would say there's another chance. Uh, there's a new opportunity, um, a new possibility, another chance to do that which um, I had not uh, perhaps been successful with the year before. Uh, there's a new opportunity, a new chance for me to see some things that I've never seen before. There, there's a new opportunity and another chance for me to do some things that perhaps I had not done before. It's also a new opportunity to get some things that I had gotten wrong right. Amen. To, to mend some things that I had broken before. It, it, it's a new opportunity. It's another chance to do the right thing in the words of our brother Spike Lee. I love the start of a new year. With the new year, um, I can say if I have not managed things well, I can look back to 2023 and I can say uh, that was last year. Uh, if my wife tells me that I wasn't all that patient, I, I can say, well, you know what, baby, that was, that was in 2023. This is a, this is a new year. If, if you, not you, but somebody you know, if they were a messy person, they can declare to you uh, this first week of January, I used to be messy, but that was in 2023. Uh, it's a new year. It's a new me. If you were ungrateful last year, you, you didn't pause for the cause and, and honor God with thanksgiving for all that God had done for you how he woke you up every morning and made sure you had enough to eat, how he protected your going out and your coming in, your uprising and your lying down, how God had wrapped his arms of protection around you. Not that nothing happened, but through it all, God was with you. This year is a chance for you to show gratitude to God. If nothing else, it's a chance to say, I thank you. I bless you. I love you. Um, it is an opportunity for you and I to look back and to think about not just where God has brought us from, but where God is taking us. I love the new year. Uh, in the new year, people get fixated on things. We, we are waiting. Uh, our oldest is traveling, and we're waiting for his return because we plan to have a vision board party, Sister Hannah. 
uh, where the family we get together, Takiyah is uh, getting supplies where we sit and we contemplate and we pontificate about what it is we'd like to accomplish in the year ahead, where we think about our goals and our plans and our vision for for our life the next 12 months, should the Lord give us life. The, the new year is a beautiful thing, but I come by to tell you as you uh, do what we will do, uh, put your plans together uh, as you think about what it is you want to accomplish, as you think about what it is that you want to have, I want to encourage you uh, as you consider and contemplate the new year, I want to encourage you that, that above all things, I I desire, I pray that you would be fruitful. Y'all with me? Oh, y'all going to make me work. I was going to preach just a minute this morning without sweating. I might have to sweat today. I, I want you to be, be fruitful. I, I know that some of you have gym memberships, and the goal is fine and fit. Uh, you go get fine, and you go get fit. Uh, but in all you're getting, I want you to, I want you to be fruitful. Uh, some of you, you looked at your bank register and you said that I, I didn't manage things well last year. I, I want to get my debt in check. I, I want to increase my net worth. And, and you should, you should do all that you can do to be fiscally fit and sound. But at the end of the day, I, I desire for you, I pray for you, I long for you that you would be fruitful. Some of you, you are building something. You're, you're building a, a business. You are building a reputation. You, you are building a network. Do all that you can and can all that you get. But I want you in the new year, I want to encourage you uh, as we step into this year to be fruitful. Y'all with me? I want to encourage you uh, to go beyond the trappings of this life. And I want you to think bigger. I want you to think higher. Uh, I want you to be fruitful. Um, the text is tailored to tell us something about what it means to be fruitful, how you and I can be fruitful as we contemplate, as we step over, as we lean into a new year. The, the text is tailored to tell us what being fruitful looks like. Not only that, the, the text is tailored to tell us how I, what true fruitfulness looks like. And so if, you will, uh, if you'll indulge me just for a few minutes, I just want to walk you through uh, what it looks like to be fruitful. Y'all with me? Y'all excited? Y'all ready? Amen. What's the title of the text for today? Fruitful. Amen. Praise God. The, the text picks up. It, it picks up like most texts pick up when you work your way and you walk through the Gospels. The text picks up with Jesus doing what Jesus does. Jesus is walking, it says, at first, and then sitting by the seaside. And i got to pause here. It's not one of the central points, but it's a necessary point. He, he walks and he sits, and he is surrounded by a crowd. He is surrounded by a crowd because he comes with some good teaching that people want to uh, lean in and hear of. He, he is surrounded by a crowd because they know wherever Jesus is, there's some healing in the house. He, he's surrounded by a crowd because he, they know that whatever their circumstance is, that they have not discovered anything that is the writer of Scripture says that is too hard for God. They, they know that wherever Jesus is, this is where preaching gets good, wherever Jesus is, that, that if they could just reach out and touch Jesus, that they don't even have to tell Jesus about their troubles or about their problems, that Jesus will heal them right where they are. They, they come to Jesus because they've heard about this Jesus who will sit down with a woman beside a well and tell her everything there is to know about what's happened in her life and through her life, who's been in her DMs and out of her DMs and still accept her as she is. They, they come to Jesus because Jesus has been in the graveyards where we don't like to go. Uh, we, he's been in the graveyards, and even a demon-possessed man, he, he has healed him of every soul's disease. They come thronging Jesus. So when I come to church on a day like today, and I'm, 
I'm thankful for y'all. I praise God for y'all, but it's still just too many empty seats for me because I know that there's life where Jesus is, and I know that there's healing where Jesus is, and I sure enough know that there's power where Jesus is. So here's what I want we all to do from now on. I need you to tell somebody about this Jesus. I, I need you to share this Jesus with somebody. I need you to not be ashamed of what you've been through, what you're going through. I need you to tell somebody it wasn't nobody but Jesus who delivered me no nobody but Jesus who kept me I need you to stop being silent about Jesus I saw it last week those who like football I saw it last week we we were watching a game I can't even remember I can't remember who it was that say they got cheated last week who was the case was it the the Lions say they got cheated last week. It was the Lions who say they got cheated last week. Y'all stay with me. The, the, the Lions are down in the red zone. They're, they're about to score, and, and they go to line up, and these big fellas, uh, case plays on the line, these big fellas, they, they, they gather on the line, and the big fellas, all they normally do is block. That's what they do. But there are some special plays where a big fella gets to gets to announce to declare that that he is eligible to do more than block he's eligible to receive the ball they had a couple of big fellas come in that game those big fellas that came in the game and in order to be eligible you have to announce you have to declare you have to tell the the referee that I am declaring myself as an eligible receiver and that big lineman he he went near the ref, they say. I, I watched the tape. He went near the ref. That there appeared to be some dialogue. They have helmets. You can't tell. The, the play was run. Uh, his mama had to be delighted. This big six-foot, three-something fella catches the ball in the back of the end zone for what should be uh, the game winner, and they declared that um, uh, he was ineligible. Oh, my God. They, they complained about it. Uh, the coach almost cried about it. They screamed about it. And I said, Case, you know what the problem is. You know what the problem is. The, that fella entered the game, and he wasn't vocal enough. He, he entered the game. He was being very sneaky. He, he was being very, he, he was acting very privately. He didn't want the world to know who he really was. Because if he just told them, what he was doing, if he'd have been vocal about it, if he'd have been outrageous about it, if he had been audacious about it and still ran the play, that, then maybe the, maybe the fate of the end of the game would have been different if he'd have just opened up his mouth. Maybe life, uh, maybe those who know Jesus, maybe those who feel these pews, maybe it would look different. Y'all say amen. If we, if we didn't keep quiet, if we told somebody, told somebody, there's life there, there's, there's hope there, there's joy there. If, if we just opened up our mouths, told somebody very vocally and loudly that there, there's power there, there's peace there. I, I know you're going through, I go through too, but guess what? There's some comfort there that, that if we just opened up our mouth and told somebody because the world tells all that it is and all that it does and all that it likes and all that it doesn't like, if, if we just open up our mouth and tell somebody that God is good, y'all going to start telling somebody, y'all going to, I preached it before. I won't get messy today, but I'll say it anyway. Or y'all going to keep treating Jesus like a sneaky link. Y'all going to tell somebody what Jesus does, who Jesus is, the hope you have in Jesus. If, if you take nothing else from the sermon, I want you to take that, that you and I have a responsibility to take Jesus to the world. And it don't matter what people think of you or don't think of you. Because they think whatever they're going to think and not think whatever they're going to not think already. Just tell them about Jesus, that there, there's power in Jesus and peace in Jesus. That there's hope in Jesus and trust in Jesus. All I stop by to say is that Jesus had a crowd. We ought to have a crowd. Jesus had a crowd that gathered along the seashore. 
there were so many people who had gathered around Jesus that Jesus got into a boat and then began to teach because it was just too many people for him. He, he had to create some space. He had to create some distance. And he got in the boat and he began to teach. And there's a little bit of, that, there's a little bit of pain in the text. I won't linger long. But he taught them in parables. He taught them in parables. Um, we like to think that he taught in parables because it was easy for people to understand uh, and therefore they could do what it was that he was uh, uh, instructing them to do, but that's not really the truth, right? He, he says in this text, the, the disciples are wondering why he is speaking in the way that he is speaking, that you do know that in Scripture parables, it, it is a prophetic delivery, that there would come a time because people are so hardened of heart, there, there would become a time where because people didn't want to hear the things of God or, or the ways of God, that, that Jesus would come, but he would stop speaking plainly to people because their hearts were hardened and their ears were dull, that he would then speak in parables. It is really a sign of judgment, but he speaks in parables to them and he gives them the parable of the sower and the seed and the ground. And because my heart is that you would be fruitful this year, I just want to give you the parable of the sower and the seed and the ground. I want you to get what you can from it, and then I want you to go out and be fruitful. Amen. That's it. That, that, that's my goal. Jesus, if you pick up in this 13th chapter, if, if you read uh, beginning around verse 4, Jesus gives this parable about a sower, a sower, someone who has seed. Amen. The sower has seed, and the sower is scattering the seed. Very simple. We have a sower, and we have a seed. Jesus then describes how the seed falls on different ground and the effect thereof. The first thing that Jesus says is that, that some of the seed fell along the path. Before I get to the ground, i got to tell you about the sower. i got to tell you about the seed. The, the sower, as we, as we read through the parable, uh, the sower is God. God is the sower. I, I don't need to give you God's resume. In the beginning was God. All things were made by him. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. I said it yesterday, the, the, the sower is God. Uh, the, the, the sower is eternal in the heavens. The, the sower is sovereign. The sower is wise. The, the sower is not bound by time or circumstance. There is no limitation with God. His ways are unsearchable. All I'm trying to say is what you already know. This is a good sower. And the sower has good seed. The, the seed is the very word of God. They, they sang about it earlier if you leaned in on that first song. They, they, they sang about this word. Jesus is the word of God. Jesus is the word become flesh. Jesus has given us the word to, to live and to move and, and to have our being through the word. All I'm really trying to say is you got a good sower and you got some good seed. Nothing wrong with the sower. Nothing wrong with the seed. That's why I can stand up here and say if the seats are empty, it's not because uh, we need a new gospel. It's not because we need a new gospel. I, if, 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 they're, if they're in the crowd, it, it, it's not because there's something wrong with God. I, I need to re-envision God. It, it's not because we need fancy lights or fog machines or, or theater seatings. It's a good sower and it's a good seed. And nothing wrong with whoever do that. They do what they want to do. All I'm trying to tell you is you got a good sower and you got a good seed. The, the controversy in the text comes from the soil that the ground that the seed falls on. The record says that the good sower with the good seed, he scattered the seed and some fell on, I'll call it, a hard ground. The record says that some of that seed had landed on the path. It landed on the path, good sower, good seed, landed in a hard place. And the record says, if you read beginning around verse 4, that birds descended and they ate up the seed. 
if, if you jump into the text as we've read it for today, Jesus describes that. He says that when I talked about the seed falling on the path and, and the birds coming to take the seed, that that is one who hears the word of God. And the evil one, the tempter, Satan, because it has fell in a very hard and hardened place. The, the evil one comes, not, not, not late, but suddenly and immediately, and robs them of the seed. Do I have any hard hearts in the house today? That after all this sweating and all this yelling and all of this encouraging and all of this persuading, that, that the evil one will, will get in your back seat when you leave here today. All of this talk about fruitfulness and new beginning, that, that the evil one who the record says, he, he, he seeks to kill, steal, and destroy, that the evil one will creep into your, your, your living room later today and sit down with you and say, well, all that stuff that pastor was talking about, and snatches it away. He says, for some people, it's not the sower, it's not the seed, that, that the seed is falling into very hard places. And therefore, it bears no fruit. How have, have you allowed your heart to be hardened? Because life can harden your heart. You, 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 you understand what I'm saying? Like, li life has a way of, of, of hardening your heart. It, if you've ever worked with your hands, you, you know the more that you use your hands, and, I, and I, I'm talking about work with your hands, the, the more that you use your hands, the, the harder your hands become. Calloused even. Skin on top of skin. Hardened. The more you live, the more, the more you use, the, the more you live, the, the harder your heart can get. that seed, don't you, don't get it twisted. It's, it's an enemy that's coming in, taking the word away from you. I want you to be fruitful this year. I want you to think about what is the condition of my heart. Is my heart hardened? So I hear it, but, but it doesn't land in a moist place. It, it doesn't land somewhere where it can be implanted. It, the, the evil one comes and just takes it away from me. Jesus says that that's how, uh, that's how it is with some people. But then he says not only does that seed sometimes find hard places, but, but that seed sometimes finds rocky places. Look at it with me in the text. Jesus says that there was some seed and it was sown on rocky ground. We know a lot about this one. Um, here, here he says, what is sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word. And I usually love this word uh, in scripture immediately, uh, suddenly, uh, without delay, receives it, hear it, You see it? Yet he has no root in himself. You see it? Uh, he endures. She, she endures for a while. But what happens? Tribulation or persecution. I like a deacon manly. Trouble comes on account of the word see that and immediately he falls away hear it hear it you you heard it but but see it with with your spiritual imagination good sower good seed throws it on rocky ground and here's what it looks like it looks like screaming and shouting and exultation in the church house Sunday morning, 10 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Make it through the sermon a little bit around 11 or so. You get happy again. But when you go out into the world, life, sicknesses, injustices, mistreatments, Conflict and misunderstanding, struggles and fights aren't not because 
not because of anything else, but because of the word. Have you ever tried to live out the word and it invited conflict? Have you ever tried to forgive and it invited conflict? Have you ever tried to give and it created conflict? Have you ever tried to love somebody because the word called you to love your enemy and to do good to them who despitefully use you? Have you ever tried to live out the word? Have you ever tried to share the word and it invited problems? Has somebody ever found out that you are a believer and treated you differently on account of the word? Have you ever been passed over because of the word? He says that there are people who sit in Morningstar, sit in churches all over. They hear the word. They get happy. They say hallelujah. And the word is not rooted. It's not. It hasn't penetrated so that no matter what comes what may you're able to stand I, I never will forget in our old house we had some we had some shrubs out in front of the house and uh, one of them was dying and I thought I was doing something bought a little chainsaw and I cut that shrub down and I said baby I cleared I cleared the shrub she came out she looked at it she said yeah but what's what's that Y'all know what she saw. She saw the stump. I said, ain't nothing but stump. I'll get, I'll get the stump out. I, I'll get the shovel. So I got the shovel, and I started digging. And, and the more I dug into the ground, the, the thicker I saw roots in the ground. They, they were reaching deep down in the ground. I, I got to sweating out there. I said, okay, okay. This, this isn't as easy as I thought, but I can, I can get it up. And the more I dug, the thicker and more tangled it was. I got a chainsaw. I, 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 can, I can chainsaw. I don't know the word. I, I can chainsaw this, this stump up out the ground. And I almost died trying to get that stump up out the ground. One, one of the neighbors who had a real chainsaw, he said, I don't think that's going to do it because that stump is rooted in the ground. It don't matter what you do on top. It, it ain't coming out of the ground. You're going to need some heavy equipment to get it up out the ground. I just want us to be the kind of saints that it don't matter what happened. No, no winds that blow. No rain that come. No trouble that flows. No, no rivers that rise that can rock us from being rooted in Jesus. No bill collector. No, no misunderstanding, no accusation even that rocks us from being rooted in Jesus. Songwriter says the winds may blow, the breakers may dash. I shall not fade because he holds me fast. I want to be rooted in Jesus so, so that I can be fruitful for him. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get excited. But it says some of us, we're not rooted. We get happy, but we're not rooted. We scream, but we're not rooted. We run, we're not rooted. They throw blankets on us as we lay prostrate on the ground, but we're not rooted in him. I want to be rooted in him. And he says the, some of them, they get the word, because they're not rooted. You're not rooted in yourself. You don't know who you are. It's okay for me not to know who you are. I don't know you. I, I don't know what you've been through. I mean, I know you, but I don't know you. You understand what I'm saying? That there is the public self, right? There, there, there is the private self that your family see. And then there's the, there is the inner self that nobody but you and God knows about. He says, I want to be I want to be rooted. They're not rooted in themselves. You're going to help your children, help your grandchildren. Help them become rooted. Help them become rooted. Know who they are in Christ. I, I know what the world is going to tell them, but help them know who they are in Christ. You ought to know who you are in Christ. 
Do you know who you are? Who you really are? Do, do you know who you are? That, that you are the head and not the tail. Do, do you know who you are? That, that you are a child of the king. Do you know who your daddy is? Do, do you know that, that you are of a royal priesthood? That, that you are of a holy nation? You, you can't do nothing but be fruitful. Do you know who you are? Even when you're weak, you're strong. Do you know who you are? Don't, don't you know that you have power that, that the world didn't give you? Do you know who you are? Do you? I want you to be rooted in yourself, and when you know who you are, you'll be fruitful. You'll be rooted. You'll be strong. I said I won't hold you along. The third point, I'm almost done. He says that some of the seed, it was scattered. I got to remind you, good sower. Good seed. Bless you, God. Good seed. The word is good. Good sower. God is good. This seed, it landed amongst the thorns. It landed amongst the, the thorns. Uh, we had a rose bush uh, at that old house, and it was just tangled in and on itself. And the petals were pretty, but the petals fall off. You know, it's just, just thorny. Y'all, y'all with me? Couldn't nothing grow up under the, the rose bush. It, it was all tangled up, and it was thorny. Jesus says some of this good seed is thrown, um, it's thrown, and and the thorns they, oh, they have a way of, uh, consuming it, and crowding it out. Y'all, y'all ever seen that? Just, just it tangled in and on itself, and there's no room. There's no room for it to, uh, to grow, to bud, to, to be fruitful. I, I've discovered, and this is just my little life. I've discovered that our lives can be the same way. Too crowded. I know, I know, I, I know. Everybody want to do well and be well. Not knocking it. You the king's kid. Praise God. Be all you can be in Christ. Achieve all you can achieve in Christ. That's the purpose of the message today. It's to be fruitful. But hear what Jesus says, and I have to give caution because Jesus gave caution. Jesus says, but some people, the the word, good word, it comes in, and life is so crowded. The cares of the world is how Jesus describes it. Anybody got any cares? Anybody got any cares? Anybody keep lists? Do y'all keep lists? So I, have, I keep a list. I keep lists, plural, lists. Uh, one of the things I do, because I'm a faulty human being, it's just me, the same Bible, I'm a faulty human being, my memory is funny, I have good intentions, but I can't keep it all in my head, I write down almost everything. So I got lists, so I got lists, um, all kind of lists, but I have family lists, and I have to kill your name, and I got Camden name, and I got Case name, and I got Cade name, and I write down uh, commitments I made or things that they need. Amen. I ain't talking about just material stuff. I'm talking about, you know, uh, uh, he might need a little encouragement. I need to be intentional about encouraging, fill in the blank, because I notice he needs a little bit of encouragement. Or his glasses might be broken. Uh, he need new glasses. We need to make appointments to get glasses and fill in the blank. Amen. Uh, Got to pick up the prescription from CVS because the prescription and we want to pick it up before the new year because when it turned the new year it's going to cost more so we got to get by there before. Y'all with me? Lists. And then as I deal with what's on the list I mark it off. It's been cared for. It's been completed. It's been it's not a bad thing to keep that list. 
But sometimes I just talk about me. You got your own list. Sometimes I get too worried about that list. I, sometimes I get too fixated on that list. Sometimes I, I beat myself up over what I'm not able to do from that list. Because just because I think it's a need doesn't mean that I can satisfy the need in the moment. Sometimes I don't even have the ability to do what's on that list. And I get wrapped up in the cares. It's a good thing. My family's been entrusted to me. Good thing, wonderful thing, beautiful thing. But sometimes we can get so caught up in the cares of the world. I just preached it, but I'm going to put a point, pinpoint on it because you didn't get it. Some of that stuff we can't even fix. And some of that stuff we can't even handle. And some of that stuff, even on our best day, we are not equipped to deal with it. Some of that stuff is going to take somebody outside of us to deal with. Somebody who's higher. Somebody who's bigger. Somebody who's stronger. Somebody who is eternal. Some of that stuff, make it plain, Pastor. Some of that stuff, that's some God stuff. You got some God stuff. You got some relational stuff, some stuff you, you're worried about, you care about, good care, but you're not the solution. Only God can fix it. Oh, only God can heal it. Oh, only God can mend it. And sometimes we get good word and the thorns and the cares of life. They just no room for God. You just, you got to list you right. God is over your list. Do, do your planning. Uh, address what's within your power, your scope to do. But don't allow the cares of this world to rob you of the joy that's found in God. The power that's found through the word of God. He said some of them, they had so many cares, so many worries, so many things on their list. That, that it literally, the word got choked out. I want to encourage you, let some stuff go this year. Let some stuff go. Make, let some stuff go and make room for God. Y'all with me? Like, for real, for real. Like, make, act like somebody coming to the crib and you got to get up out your room because you ain't got enough rooms for everybody and the guests to have a room. So we just going to clear this room out for God. Who coming by the crib today, Daddy? Ain't hey, just God is coming. God is at the crib today. We're, we're making room in our schedule and room in our thoughts for who? God. But not only that, y'all tired. Amen. He says, the, not only do the thorns, the, the cares of this world choke it out, but the deceitfulness of riches. Deceitfulness. This is deep. It, it was deep for me. Deep. The deceitfulness of riches. I, I was studying, and one writer described it this way. I put it in the notes for y'all. One, one writer said it this way. The, the writer said, the lies that money tells. Y'all with me? The, I never thought about it like that, but that's what the writer is saying. The, the lies that money tells. Hold on, we're talking about money, but we're talking about God and the word, and, and money can tell a lie so good that it chokes out the word of God every day. <laughs> money will tell you that if you get enough of it, all your, leave your worries behind. It, it will tell you a lie. Money will tell you that, that if I just got enough of it, whatever enough is, I still ain't figured out what, what enough is, but but it will tell you that if I get enough of it, then, then the things that are broken in my life can be mended. Money will tell you that if I had, if I had it like that, I'd actually be happy. I'd be happy. M money will tell you that, oh, if you chase me, if you pursue me, with all your heart, with all your might. If, if you come running up after me, if, if, if you come after me, if, if, if you seek me in life, that, that is the ultimate gain. 
they playing bells to announce if my money is right, I'll be right. People will treat me right. If my money is right, then I'll have more confidence because people with money, they are self-confident. They, they, I, I, I'm, I'm not throwing shade. He's very successful. I know a brother. I, I know a brother. is a Caucasian brother. He a brother. I, I know a brother. Uh, uh, he good, good man, uh, successful in as the world would define success, successful with his family. And, and I told Kia, I said, do you know? And uh, I got a nickname for him. I won't get a nickname for him. <laughs> uh, do, do you not know? Uh, they just flew for 24 hours to the island. In the seashells, they laying down on the plane, monitors, TVs. I ain't mad at them. Praise God. <laughs> hey, next time you go, hey, I'm free. I'm available. I, I, I'll, I'll go with you. I, I'll see the, I'll see the seashells with you. I'm not mad at at your worldly attainment. I'm not mad at it. But what I will not do is is chase after it. What I will not do is think that that is life. What, what I will not do is think that that's above God, that, that the creator who gives every good and perfect gift is somehow subservient to that. That's what I will not do. So money tells lies. Money tells lies. It's a new year. It's a new year. I want you to be fruitful. So I need you to take some time to address the lies that money has told you that has caused that to choke out the budding process in your life, to choke out the fruit that God desires to develop in your life through the implanted word of God. I, I need you to confront money and tell it you a lie. I'll give it, amen, and I'll save what I need to save but guess what? The rest of it, I just got to live on because I'm here and I got to live. But I won't chase after it. And I won't let it become God. And I won't let it whisper in my ear and lie to me to the point that my life is not fruitful. We buried my cousin. I'm going on my seat after I give you this final word quickly. Buried him on yesterday. And uh, it's no, nothing new. Go to the cemetery. And, um, you know, the preacher, they, I won't give out the preacher hacks. Amen. But basically, we park where we can read first. Amen. And everybody know it. The people in the cemetery know it. So they tell you where to park so you can pull out then. Sister Sharon the Hearst, she'd be right behind you. She'd pull out. Amen. So that's what we did yesterday. Um, Every, uh, pretty much every time I walk out into the cemetery, uh, we happen to be at Sunset Gardens, walk out, uh, look down, first one to the graveside, typically, uh, with the workers. Um, I love them. Um, they do what they do with, with respect. Amen. Uh, make some small talk. And then almost without fail, I just look down into that hole. Have you ever just stood there and looked down at it? This is before they roll the casket on it. I, I just looked down. Six foot. Nothing but dirt. Just dirt. Yeah, have you ever? I, I, just, I just paused and I just looked down. And it's just, just dirt. And all that goes down in it is whatever you came in. And whatever they dressed you. Just dirt. I, I don't know. I, 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 don't, I, I won't. I'll be at my own, but I won't be at my own. I, I wanna. I, I'm like. I wanna see him put the dirt on me. I, I know I can't see it, but I mean, that's just how my mind works. Cause it's just you in the dirt, and then they just cover you with dirt, and that's it. I can't take the Yukon in it with me. If I get the Escalade. Can't take it with me, as pretty as it might be. Can't take the house with me. They ain't going to throw my passport in it with me. Can't, 
I, I don't even have a real like band. I got a rubber band on my ring. It's we married. Can't take it with me. 401k, it transfer upon death. It ain't mine no more. IRA, transfer upon death. It ain't mine no more. Insurance policy. Whew. Man, I told them, y'all can't nothing happen to us for the next week. I said, I will not make Camden rich at 17 years old. Because that ain't mine either. It's whoever survives me. Look, clothes in my closet ain't much to talk about, no way. Can't do nothing, can't do nothing with them. Are y'all with me? I, can I make it plain? Scripture says we brought nothing into this world. Can't take nothing out with us. But the little stuff that they put on us. And it's just laying in the dirt. So in, instead of chasing after trinkets, cash, clothes, cribs, money, I just want whatever little life I got, I just want to be fruitful for God. Whatever days this little vapor of life is, I, I just want to be fruitful for God. I, I don't want you to even know my name. I could preach you never know my name. I, I just want to be fruitful for the, for the kingdom of God. Here's what Jesus says, that there's some seed that gets laid out on good soil. If you want to get happy today, this is as close as you're going to get to getting happy. That there's seed that is scattered on good soil, and here it is. That, that is the seed that, that is received with the heart of understanding. That, that's somebody that sits under all this good teaching every Sunday and good teaching on Wednesday night and, and all of the prayers and the songs that are prayed, the, the prayers prayed and the, the songs sang and they get all of this good word and it takes root in their heart. Here's what happens. Nobody may ever know your name and you may never travel to the seashells. You, you will still have some trials and some tribulations. Some, some things will still be out of whack in your life but here's what Jesus says. You will be fruitful. Oh, I'm happy about being fruitful. I, I'm happy about being fruitful because here it is, Jesus says, that not only will you be fruitful, but, but here's where controversy crept in again. I'm sorry, I got happy, y'all. It, it crept in again because, let me read it for you, it says that, that when, you, when you receive seed like this, you, you bear and you yield. And in some cases, here's where the investor class will come in. It says a hundred fold even. Now, but sometimes God is so good that that sometimes it's 60 fold and, and other times it's 30 fold. All I'm trying to say is that God will take a life and a heart that is moist with his word that that his word has been implanted in and nobody may know your name and you may not live and eat the finest but God will take that kind of life and through it will bear fruit that will bless other people, will help other people, will make other people well in Christ, that they may see the beauty of God and the wonder of God and the glory of God, that they might live for Christ, that they might even die for Christ even, so that one day after a while when you ain't got no more lists and got no more cares or got no more worries, that so that one day after a while when, when there's no more troubling and no more tribulation and no more problems and no more despair. That one day after a while, when, when you don't have to worry about what folk think of you or what they said about you, that one day after a while you'll stand in the presence of God to behold the beauty of God and the wonder of God. I like it how the scripture writes it, that, that our eyes haven't seen and our ears haven't heard the, the things not even, it hasn't even entered into the heart of man. The things that God has prepared for those who love him. I want to be fruitful. I, I want to be fruitful in 2024. I want to bear much fruit. Do you want to bear fruit? You want to bear fruit? I want to be fruitful for God. 
you older now, you done seen it. You done touched it. You've tasted it. You're, you're older now. You, it, it's some things that you wanted to do. Yet some of it you did. Some of it you wasn't able to do. That's all fine, but, but it's a lower, lesser thing. I want to be fruitful for God. I want to I impact the kingdom of God. I want somebody to know that there's power in the name of Jesus. Yeah, I, I want somebody to know that. I, I want somebody, a friend, a neighbor, a coworker who, who's grieving because unsaved people lose people just like saved people lose people. The only difference is they don't know who to cry out to. I want them to know the comfort of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. I, I want them to know what it feels like to have the Spirit invade your space where you start crying and you don't know what you're crying about. But it's so good. The fellowship of the Spirit is so good that, that you sit at your coffee table and it moves you. No music, it moves you. Where you're riding in your car and you can't sing and you're, you sing praises to God. Tears coming down your cheek. You sing praises to God where you're at the family gathering and you look out and they're having a good time eating and talking and joking and your heart wells up because you know it's nobody but God who kept you nobody but God who brought you nobody but God who sustained you where the little ones don't even know what the family done been through bless you God I want to be fruitful for I want to be, I, I, I want to live a life that matters to God. You with me? Help these children. Help tell them that's what it's about. Not fame. Not finance. Not fitness. Not being fine. God to multiply in your life fruit. The fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of love. Patience. Kindness. Do you want to be fruitful this year? I want to redefine what it means to be fruitful. Work, you got to work. You got to. But I want you to be fruitful for God. Because Jesus paid it all. Jesus, he paid it all. He paid the price. He gave his life. He bled, he died so that you could be fruitful for the kingdom. I know we don't do this often, and I know we in church, but it is what it is. I didn't expect to see Pastor Garfield here because I heard he had the flu. Uh, but praise God. Praise God for you. Praise God. We don't do this often uh, anymore with COVID and modern church, but I do want to have an altar call. I want, hey man, I know y'all got pocketbooks, y'all got all that. If you know you're in church, but you want to keep your pocketbook, keep your pocketbook, bring it with you. Uh, I'm going to ask the Brother Stan, Brother Nui, y'all remain at the rear. Brother Bruce, Brother Carl, if you could remain on the side. Hey man, so y'all safe, that's all I'm trying to say, this is a safe space. But I'm going to ask you all to come this first Sunday of the year. As we pray about being fruitful, if you can't make it to the front, I understand. It's no worries. I'm going to ask Pastor Mike to help Pastor Garfield uh, to the pulpit. I would like him to pray. 
we want to be fruitful. Um, yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Praise God. Y'all stay back in the rear. I want, look, we're still in the world. I want the, the say the boom boom man to walk in here. Amen. Amen. Okay, we're covered. Amen. Praise God. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, Lord, we come at this hour. Having heard you speak to us, Lord, we pray that our hearts will be pierced. And this year we will become fruitful, Lord. You've been so good to us. You look beyond all of our faults. Lord, you met our needs. Lord, you blessed us. What a word we receive every Sunday. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your vision. Lord, you're blessing us each and every day. And we just say hallelujah to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you've given us, a man of God, a soul that is sold out to you. We thank you, Lord. Lord, we need you. We know that there's going to be some ups and some downs, some troubles and some woes. But we know that you're a keeper and that you'll never leave us alone. Lead. God, direct our hearts and our minds. Let us have minds stayed on you. We need you, Lord. We can't do it by ourselves. But we thank you every day for the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Guide us. Walk with us all along this tedious journey. Have mercy upon our sick, our shut-in, our downtrodden. Lord, you are merciful, God. You told us to ask it and it would be given according to your will and your way. Bless your people today. Lord, let us go out. Tell people about the goodness that you give to us each and every day. We thank you for this day, this hour. Bless us, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Bless God. As we return to our seats, we're going to prepare to um, partake in the Lord's Supper. Amen. I will announce that after the Lord's Supper and the closing benediction, uh, our counselors will be standing here at the front of the altar uh, for those who are desiring prayer, uh, for those who are interested in baptism, uh, for those who would like to talk about uh, accepting uh, Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Our counselors will be at the front here at the altar after I give the closing benediction. Please, please come and see one of them. Again, prayer, baptism. If you're looking to uh, receive the gift that you have in Jesus Christ, we want to make a space and a time for you to be able to do that. Amen. Amen. I would ask then that the congregation not gather in the front aisle. Amen. Uh, that you do all of your hugs and kisses and all those good things uh, toward, the, uh, toward the rear. All right. Uh, it's fitting that the first uh, Sunday um, that we typically commemorate and celebrate the Lord's Supper. Uh, Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 says, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, 
this is my body, which is for you. We just talked about the word. That is his body, which is for us. He says, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim, you preach, you announce the Lord's death. And the best part is until he comes. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts and minds. Let's everyone have a cup. Amen. Lord, as we prepare to take the bread and the wine, we pray that you will turn it from a carnal reality to a powerful spiritual reality. That we would be reminded of the body that was given for us, the blood that was shed for us. That in our remembrance, we would look to the hope that we have in Jesus the Christ. Let the people of God say amen. First the bread, then the cup. Praise God. Amen. Are we walking around to collect those? Are they, or do we have uh, containers to collect those when they, as we leave? Amen. Uh, they will collect your cup as you prepare to leave. Our ushers are also at the rear uh, to collect tithe and offering and gifts. Uh, we will be announcing our annual giving drive uh, next Sunday, uh, our first fruits offering. So we'll plant the seed. Um, amen. Amen. I also just got an announcement that uh, we're looking for volunteers to help out at the church this week. Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, to help clean. Uh, one, it's just a good time to clean in general, but two, uh, we clean up where we have guests over. I hope <laughs> we all do. Amen. I'm sure we all do. So we want to make sure that our uh, house is in order. Again, you can contact the church office uh, to arrange uh, to be part of the cleaning crew. Brother said, you're going to be here on Monday. Amen. Amen. So you can contact the office. But again, 8.30 to 4 is the window. Uh, all are welcome. We just want to get our house in order uh, as we invite guests in next week. Won't you stand to your feet? Amen. Smile at somebody. Amen. Let, let me say this, too. I, I, it's in the notes. Um, there is a book that is referenced at the end of the handout. Amen. If you've got your handout, it is on the back page of your handout. Amen. Amen. Do you see it? It's under homework. I need you all to go out and purchase that book. Amen. Um, we're going to order a very limited supply, but for everybody who has a, a smartphone and you've ordered anything from Amazon, you can order this book. It's easy. Um, it's $20. Amen. Uh, you can find it on Amazon. We've given you uh, the title Through the Bible in One Year, a 52 lesson introduction to the 66 books of the Bible. I know some of y'all say, I've done that before. I've been there. I've done that. I know all there is to know. You can help me teach it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Uh, I want us as a church, we are, um, we are constantly organically growing. Not everybody came in at the same time, and we want to make sure that we are rooted in the Word of God this year. Amen. 52 weeks, 52 weeks. So please, uh, by the first Sunday in February, if you could make an effort to purchase that book, uh, we will, again, purchase a limited number, uh, primarily for our seasoned saints who say, Pastor, I'm not getting on Amazon, and I'm not going to Barnes & Noble. Um, but if you are, I'll say, if you're under 60, amen, you're going to have to get it on your own. Amen. Smile at me. Amen. All right. <laughs> Pray the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And wherever you go this week, whatever you do, whatever joy you experience, whatever sorrow you and I must endure, my prayer is that the Lord will give you peace. It's peace that I leave you with. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen, amen, amen.